It's been one year since the 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck and decimated Nepal. That year began with an influx of emergency relief aid, close to $10,000 of which came from buy one give one businesses in the first week alone. Although these businesses continued giving as they did prior to the quake, on a regular basis, the flood of worldwide emergency funding soon slowed to a trickle. But the Nepalese people are strong and resilient, despite the struggle for resources. They care so deeply about creating the best future possible for their children, and have continued to make education a priority. Balwana is one teacher, formerly a student, who hasn't given up. She practices and teaches dance and music at the World Youth International School in the Kathmandu Valley. I give you hope. Uh, we are in my 10th grade, then I went away to study uh, for plus two. I'm in college, right now I'm studying in college. I complete my studies and then I teach here sometimes. WYI provides an education for over 500 children and a home for around 60, for Nepali youth 3 to 16 years old. Radha Opredi has been running the school and home for 16 years, even finding the kids jobs, homes, and continuing education after they complete their program. My life is for them, and that's why we have an infrastructure very good, a student very good, and education quality is very high. In this area, our, our school is the top. But the last year has been incredibly difficult for Upredi, her students, and staff. Thankfully, there were no serious physical injuries here from the earthquake, but they were all emotionally shaken. Everything wa was shaking. We are very scared. We feel very lonely. Alone. We, we cried a lot. The quake killed more than 8,000 people and injured at least 20,000 more throughout the country. Even those who weren't displaced by crumbled buildings had to live outside their homes for fear of collapse. Huge aftershocks continued to rock the region, and children were left orphaned in need of care. Upredi was there to help pick up the pieces. It was 25, 26 children brought by the organization and by police and by other people. Upredi is still working to find sponsors for some of these children. The kitchen and many of the classrooms are unusable and only the older kids are allowed to sleep in their quarters because they are more capable of quickly running outside in case of an aftershock. The smaller children sleep here in Upredi's office. Till today also, we have a kind of mental fear and we're just uh, keeping our small kids, small children to sleep in this next room because anything, anywhere may happen. International support, including funding from the B1G1 community, helped from the get-go, allowing those on the ground to build classrooms and provide school supplies. That way WYI could keep the doors open and dreams alive for so many. I like to stay here because this is the home when I start my life. For stability, regular giving is a necessity. The staff tells me that their first priority right now is to build a permanent wall around the property because they are so vulnerable to landslides. And when the monsoons come this summer, they'll be in trouble. The land is sinking down. So it, it's because there is no uh, retaining wall. As you explore the Kathmandu Valley, you find that you can't go more than a stone's throw without seeing the ruins and destruction, also the rebuilding efforts. But if you spend a little more time here, you find that the problems and danger run so much deeper than shattered infrastructure. Nepal has been facing months of food and fuel shortages due to a blockade at the Indian border. The blockade stems from political unrest after Nepal adopted a new constitution last September. And the blockade has made it difficult for goods to cross country lines, forcing black market prices. This makes caring for those in need even tougher. Vegetable also gone up. Rice and groceries have gone up. This is just the tip of the iceberg of Nepal's current crisis. But with continuing support, the Nepalese people can truly rebuild their future step by step. And it's simple to support these ongoing projects through B1G1 and touch countless lives. B1G1 business contributions have already created more than 700,000 giving impacts, providing 88,000 bricks to build classrooms and 470,000 days of educational support for children in need. They have helped with their children's education, you know, lots of facility, and so I think this organization is a great job for our country and our people. Now imagine if more and more businesses did this. A growing, giving business community can provide the ongoing resources necessary for a sustainable future. This isn't the first natural disaster to wreak havoc on a nation, and it certainly isn't the last. 
So rethinking the way we can provide continual support could be the catalyst necessary to successfully rebuild post-disaster communities.